This conference will now be recorded. I'll accept a motion on the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry, this way. I make a motion to again, uh, amend the agenda to remove the action item zone change in ETZ for 2802 Six Sheeter Road. Okay. All those that. Oh, we're going to need a second. Huh? Okay. Okay. Does everyone have a chance to read the meeting? Minutes from me. Can you call to see if everybody's in favor? Oh, everybody have favor of the agenda? Aye. Aye. I'll accept your motion on the minutes. I make the motion to approve the minutes of the May. What is it? May 29th. May 29th of 2019 meeting. Do I have a second? Second. All those approved. Aye. 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 Uh, public comment. Anybody has a comment on? The items on the agenda. No, there's nobody on. Okay, let's move on to action items. Can I get a motion? I make a motion to move on to the action item. The first one. Yes, ma'am, the first one. Zone change for R3 Chavez Edition, Unit 2, Block 29. Miss Crystal. Can we get a second? Yeah, sorry. I'm tired of that second. You get a second. Yeah. Crystal. Good evening, Commissioners. We have a request for a zone change. Uh, the address of the arrestor is 2521 Six Shooter Road. They are wanting to change uh, the entire block. They own um, all but two lots, actually. They're in the process of purchasing one of them. Um, so they own all but one lot in Block 29. So they requested to change the entire block to a uh, R3 commercial, so they can have their um, family ran parking business. It's not on the just tell me when it's open to describe it. Okay, so this is the property out on Six Shooter Road highlighted in the yellow. Uh, that is the entirety of Block 29. Over on the other side, you can see the entire uh, subdivision there is Chavez uh, Subdivision Unit 2. Uh, there's a lot of tiny lots in there um, that actually nothing can be done with because they're so small you can't put a water bill or something or anything on. Um, so the entirety of this block being changed to commercial, um, I did not see a problem with this due to the fact that there are several other trucking facilities and places back behind them and to the north of them in that area. I did recommend that you guys tell the county to look at this a little closer to see about changing more than just this one block to an R3. Um, so the county can do their due diligence on this to, to see if that would be better than just changing the one block. Uh, but I do not have an issue uh, with changing this one. I know uh, we do need to probably make some stipulations that if they're going to have truck parking, they need to have better uh, parking for their trucks. They need to have uh, uh, what was it? Penny actually mentioned this. 
Um, they need to have a feature pad and be observed, and they need to be monitored by the county as to oil and diesel spills periodically, because those trucks do leak oil, and they need to know they cannot change their oil just on the ground because that contaminates our water. And we are, you know, good supposed to be good stewards of the county and the people. That's what we. Yes, yeah. we have to be good considered. And the other thing uh, that I asked about was a traffic survey mm -hmm. because that is a school bus route when the schools are in uh, session. There are children that play. That's a very heavily um, traveled street. Mm -hmm. And we do have, we've had numerous wrecks there from people pulling out with these 18 wheelers and uh, people not paying attention. Um, so I'm not going to blame it all on the 18 wheelers, it's not, but, um, uh, you know, um, I think he asked for two or three dump trucks. I noticed that he had belly dumps and other trucks there too. So, um, there's, uh, might be needing to know how many he's going to park since we just got a trucking company on the south end at Mr. Patman's property. It used to be Mr. Patman's property. We have, and they're bringing in trucks every day. That make, that'll make us two trucking companies within a couple of miles of each other on that access to that mm -hmm. northern part of the area. And like I said, I asked for a traffic survey, and then I asked for the county to put back up signs for the children, slow for children, and uh, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> is that it? Yeah, that was it. Okay, that's it. What are the stipulations on if you have a piece of property like this and it's changed to commercial? You can't have, you can't live on it, correct? Uh, no, commercial actually allows okay. for residential yeah. and commercial. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Crystal, that was another thing I was going to say. Do they understand that taxes? are going to go up substantially from the residential to the commercial or the industrial. Uh, that's uh, we can actually, if you guys would like to address the owners with a few questions, uh, they can definitely come up and introduce themselves and we can do that at this time. Okay. If you want to answer their questions. Are you going to translate for him? No, okay, you all can go to the podium and they'll say your name, please. To introduce yourself. Oh, go ahead and ask the question. Okay. I just wondered if he understands that uh, when he changes this zone from residential to commercial, that his property taxes are going to go up substantially. I have no idea. That's something you'll have to talk to the assessor's office. And um, I mean, there's a lot of like trucks coming around. I guess all of them have to be commercial tours. Those, some of those, uh, they have been there for 20, 25 years. They're already probably They're already. Commercial. They're already. Uh, that that area. Betty, you want to tell me about? This? Okay, I don't think you understand that. Well, the other side has a covenant. His side doesn't have a covenant. I know, but I mean, he's talking about all the, tr the other trucking companies, like, um, they get all there. That's all commercial. No, properties. that's all commercial, but no, there's a um, Ranger trucking company, which uh, Armando, yeah, down the street, and then there's two or three more north of that. Yeah, and there's several on that lot, and but I'm pretty sure they've all been turned commercial already. I think so. And I think. And if they hadn't, code enforcement probably yeah, will be given to them, if, and they will have to. Yeah. It's going to come up. one way or the other. They're going to have to. There's no covenants or restrictions there. They understand. I 
just wanted you to be aware of that because a lot of times people don't understand and then when they get their tax bill it jumps up because of the change in the zone and they say why didn't you tell us well we can't tell you the cost we can just tell you to be a to, to check out check it into it yourself you have to do due diligence and check out your property and how you know that that's all you can do that's all we can do we can't we can't we're not lawyers and we're not tax assessors <laughs> and all this stuff but but we can give you heads up that you're going this is going to change that's it it can be a plus or a minus on commercial property since he's come back forward they will get a hold of them believe me yeah yeah. Well, they, uh, he's allowed to let it remain until the decision is made. Yeah, until so, the city and then the county decides. Yes or no. Yeah. I really don't see them having a problem with it. Uh, okay, so after this meeting, depending upon their view and what they say, mm -hmm. um, we take it to the county, and you will then start seeing Bruce Reed, and he will then, uh, I explained all this to your sister, I guess she's not here. I know she lives in Midland most time. Yeah. Um, you'll have to take it to the county level, and the county will have the same type of meeting, and that will be the final decision on whether it's approved or not. We don't give the final decision, the county does. What is that? Two or three more weeks before they do anything. Yeah. Like if they say yes or no, how would you know? You'll be at. You have to be at the other meeting also. Yeah. Well, that'll be set by groups. We don't know. Okay. And he'll let you know too, as soon as they set the meeting and everything. And we're we're not against his trucking company. We just have there's just certain rules you have to follow. Okay. I don't have any more questions. Anybody have any more questions? You're good, you can say it. Okay, so we're going to want to. Yes. Um, this map, can you show where Latin 19 is? So, Latin 19 would be this tiny back you see right here. Yes. All right. Well, I know she would like, not like it for them to change it to the Montreal. She may not like it. She may not want to sell, I don't know. Um, I yes. That's right next to the highway, isn't it? No. No? Um, yes, it well, the, the front 25 foot of it is a long six shooter. And so then there's two lots on there that don't belong to the first. Yeah, one. but the other one up in the center that you see this spot right here, they are actually in the in a contract to buy that property already. Crystal, how many houses? Are, have, there's just two mobile homes on, yeah. on this block. Yes, on that block there's only. And then the next homes. block is Jim Road. Yes. Okay. Um, and the thing about um, 
her not changing, uh, leaving that single lot out doesn't make a lot of sense uh, planning wise. Uh, because that single lot is a 25 by 150 foot. Um, you have to build 25 foot off of any section line in the county. So that would make that not be able to have anything built on it in the first place. And even if it wasn't that close, if you did put a small home on there, it is not large enough for a septic or a water well. So there is no, you, you couldn't build a home there on that single lot. You could park an RV then to nothing. You could park it, but you couldn't hook it up to nothing. Because there would be nothing to hook up to. <laughs> yeah, so, I don't know if you don't know red lines. This is the uh, Tatum, yes, this is the Tatum Highway here. And this is Six Shooter Road. It, it basically is this little tiny piece of this corner. That the very first one. Yeah. Well, since it's in the very first one, I guess she may not want to uh, tell it out. Well, that's that's not up to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can't force her to. We can't tell her to. That that's not our decision. We're just here to make a decision on the zone and. Uh, to leave one single lot out of a zone change is just not. It's not worth it. Not yeah. to it out. And they do have the majority of the lot, so it would be a matter of the majority. They have majority rules. Well, I'll just go ahead and tell her see what she decides. I, I really think she's interested in Santa. But are the owners here? Sir, can we ask your name? Can we ask your name? I'm Diego. She's my sister. What's the last name? The last name? Cabello. The man sitting in the corner with the the, the hat, the cowboy hat. He he um the owner? One of them. Well, you guys can discuss that after our meeting. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm right. <laughs> okay, anybody else have any questions about this? You did say that uh, if it's going to become commercial, why did she did not want, want it to change? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, let me explain. He has the largest amount of property there. Right. She doesn't. So the large amount of property rules on what gets changed and what doesn't. Her property is too small to yeah, not change. So it's easier to change the whole block because he is the largest land there. Any more questions? She can sell it for more money if it's wrong. Yes. Well, yeah. Once it becomes a market, you can sell it by now. Okay. okay. I'll accept a motion. What did we want to add to this? Motion. Um, I do have that um, we did. Uh, yeah, if you want to put it in your motion. To add the uh, traffic study, the children at Playtime, the Cleat Pad, and follow EPA rules uh, set forth on this property, yeah. uh, that would be a good suggestion for the county to add. It, is it in the recommendation? What she no. did. Is it, it's not in the recommendation? Oh, yeah. I don't think it's on the it's recommendation. Not. It's not. Yeah. The county. The county. Um, all right, so we're going to add those things in too. Okay. So you want to uh, approve with the conditions of a traffic study, children that play, safety pad for the truck parking, and, the, and following EPA rules and regulations for the truck. Okay. Is that okay? That works. Okay. Okay, then somebody needs we to. Say I make like a motion of the four items that Crystal just listed, please. That we need a second. I'll second. 
All those in favor? Aye. All those against? Okay, moving on to the next pack. Zone change in ETC of what one division? Switch lights for me. Division division. I'll accept a motion. Julia, you make a motion, I'll second. <laughs> Um, I make a motion that, that we look into the zone change for uh, what one to buy subdivision. Yes, I second. Second. I second. Crystal. All right, Commission, we have a request for a zone change um, for the subdivision. It is not subdivision yet, but they are working on that. Um, so they need, they want to get the zone change in this area. If you look at my map, the yellow line along the highway uh, is commercial zone right now. That commercial zone defined in the ETD ordinance is 330 foot into the property. Their top lots are going to be, their lots that are going to be adjacent to the road are close, uh, they're 422, a little bit over feet from the highway. So what they want to do is make that line more even with those properties, and they want it to be an R4 instead of an R3. The industrial uh, regulation will give them a little bit more uh, room to get a bigger company, a different type of company besides just trucking. Uh, the industrial would allow for a uh, type of manufacturing company to be in there, uh, and those two front lots are going to be quite large. Um, so the possibilities of having an industrial type use there would be, it's beneficial for them to do the R3 or the R4 instead of just the R3. Okay, the one you're talking about is the, not the, not the square thing, it's that blue. Not this multi-family yeah. zone here. It's right this here. is the divine property. Okay. How, far, how far do you, are they? They want in? the industrial, right now commercial comes up to about here. Uh -huh. And they want the industrial to go clear up to these first because these are going to be two large lots here. Okay. And then the rest of this is going to remain single family residential. Yeah, so the body is. Is he good? Is he here? Uh, yeah, we have representatives from Teddy here, right? Yeah. Did you guys want to introduce yourself, please? Juan Domingo is a public veteran and I'm the engineer, science engineer for this project. I'm Richard Mollick and I'm the surveyor on this project. So go to the next slide. So this is the subdivision that they're currently going to submit to the county. We're just working on this zone change so they'll have all that in order. This uh, blank area over to the west side of the or east side of the property. Uh, they don't have this divided out yet, just due to subdivision issues. There, they will divide it all out later. Um, and this lot 14 I have described here is this description of this lot right here. So this these would be the two lots that they want the industrial zone to. So that Vega Lane is a future road. Yes, this would be a future cul-de-sac road. It would have a hundred foot uh, uh, turnaround at the end. Um, so that way there's plenty of room for any type of emergency vehicles to turn around in that point. It wouldn't be a tiny cul-de-sac like we have here in town. <laughs> so, um, and I know I did have a couple of owners from the property to the north that were very concerned because they did not want this road to come through to their room. Um, and I told them that that's not what was in their, the owner's plan. I don't believe he's changed that habit. Uh, no, and uh, the cul-de-sac actually came from Bruce uh, Reed comments as well. Okay. Uh, he, he, he thought it was like a better way, uh, even uh, when he was for the owner. Yeah. Well, I know that those property owners were worried because they didn't want people just driving through. I think uh, <laughs> the property is right now, I think they have, uh, I want to say, 25, 30 feet 
uh, Eastman to where I think they're up through the road. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right now. How, how, how wide? 30. 30. 30. 30. There is a 30 foot easement right at the top of this that is in this subdivision to the north, uh, which is the city. So now. So now. Sorry. It's not a plan to ever do it. In no. fact, some of the Sedell people are actually asking to have that maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, I just had one question on this uh, property. What is it going to do about all the contaminated dirt in the corner? Uh, I think for the county, we have to remove all of that. And okay. things are falling there, we got to do as well. Okay. And uh, that's going to be taken care of for the whole thing to be approved. Okay. Know, from the road. That's my biggest issue is that contaminated dirt in it. Been there, done it, seen it, know it's there. <laughs> Madam Chairman, may I ask a question? Yeah, Penny has a question. Uh, does he, do you have any idea of what kind of um, um, subdivision. Subdivision. Thank you. Subdivision he plans on putting in. Is it going to be modular homes? Is it going to be uh, um, home, home, home? I, you know, I, I, yeah. I, I do believe when I talked to him, the thing he said to me was that he wasn't going to do like Young's does and put in a mobile home and sell it as landlocked house mm -hmm. thing. It would be the lots would be purchased and it would be the individual owner whether they put the mobile home on there or a side note home. I don't think he's come up with any covenants for the that that would I don't think there is in too many covenants out there on that property. That was my next question. Is he going to have covenants and restrictions for the property? Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, he was thinking of putting something to circle back. I know we talked about it at the beginning of the project, but I have not. I can't hear you. Oh, okay. uh, we, we had talked with him about it at the beginning of the project, and oh. he was he wanted to do it. We did some of that stuff. Uh, that way, everything is clear of what can be built. Are we talking about one acre plots, or are we talking about five acres? Uh, there's going to be uh, a little over two acres. Per, yeah. For uh, Bruce, he actually required 2.01. Yeah, they have to be a certain size. For... Yeah, so it's going to be basically the like two in the south, which is in one home is uh, two. Two point seven, they're all two. Yeah. So it's going to be over the two, which is the minimum for the county requirements. And we're going to move to a single, single family. Okay. That's all I know. <laughs> The rest of that question. Good. Well, no, they don't. Are you sure? You don't have any more questions? No. Anybody? Okay. I'll accept the motion. Make a motion. Approve. I second you. Okay. Anything else, Crystal? We'll need to get a vote on that. Oh, yeah, we need a vote. All those in favor? Signal aye. with aye. 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 Opposed? Crystal? I have nothing. Motion to adjourn. Look, well, anybody got a motion to adjourn? I thought there was a third. No, we canceled that one. Yeah, that one got canceled. We removed it. I'll accept the motion to adjourn. I write a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Ms. Penny. A second and vote. We need a second. Second. All right. All right. We will see y'all at the next meeting. Have a great day. I do believe at the next meeting we're going to have